installment three and maybe the last one I say that because I have added several more things since the other two and I'm not really sure what else I can put I'm sure over time my needs may change but right now uh, I've got quite a lot between the three videos let's just get to what I have added so this is my Reaper page the things that are new on here are starting with this button which uh, brings items to my cursor so if I have something highlighted I can move it to my cursor and like a lot of other things I can collaborate with my fader port so if I go to the beginning of the project and I can move it to the cursor that is an SWS extension which I've said in my previous videos you should get especially if you want most of these actions I've been showing you and here it is move selected items to cursor uh, the other new things on here is this golf flag and a golf flag with a circle and a line through it those are for markers so of course I can just add a few markers and those are much more standard actions so find shortcut and it already is by default to M and it's just insert marker at current position getting rid of it is possibly a goofy thing for some people but it is delete marker near cursor now I'm not concerned with the word near because with my fader port 8 watch the cursor as I move left it will jump in sequential order through the markers and to the right back through the markers so I'm not worried about getting near it I can just get rid of it next get rid of it next get rid of it next get rid of it so that's pretty handy I actually don't use a lot of markers although the song I'm trying to finish up I was doing some meticulous MIDI editing uh, in the MIDI editor um, not this but another track and um, it came in pretty uh, useful so and that is something I'm gonna take advantage of when necessary the other thing that's on this page that is new is the MIDI edit button and that is referring to this as the MIDI editor of course so if I deselect everything uh, with my fader port I'm going to select the track that everything is on so I have it selected now as you can see here so in this folder I have quite a few things um, just to get started this button with the sort of on light bulb selects everything on the track and this one deselects everything on the track or unselects it I actually can never remember how it is uh, phrased now what uh, I had an issue with is for some reason I thought main was like everything and these were just subsets I was very wrong so if you don't know that now you know so you need to go to the MIDI editor to do actions for the MIDI editor so if I find that um, this one is actually back on main so it is just item select all items in track and then unselect all items and now if I were to be on here and click this button you can see it highlights the first item that is actually a uh, action that is through uh, SWS which I've said on all my videos you need to get it is select lower leftmost item on track the reason I do that is because I can go in order if I want to select other things which is what these are for so if I want to move over to select the next one and the next one and the next one the previous one and on this one goes to the next one but it keeps everything that's already highlighted the same so it keeps them highlighted if I'm like oh this way oh wait I need the previous one still highlighted I can always grab it and then continue on and if I need to start over I can go there so it's quite handy especially with this button so this actually opens my MIDI editor and closes it the way you do that with uh, stream deck is actually a hotkey switch so you put in two commands and um, one is uh, shows this brightly and you see it darkens and so you get some visual feedback on the screen here uh, as you're doing it so escape of course will get out of the MIDI editor by default and this is my shortcut to bring it up so if I have this highlighted up down up down that's extremely handy because 
having something that opens it and then having to hit escape again just trying to streamline everything uh, while we're having this open if you look at the CC lane it's in velocity that's what this is here you can see they kind of look like velocities the foot is because a hold pedal like your sustain pedals with the foot so if I want to change the CC lane to a hold pedal I've got that and this little squiggly line is for expression so then I can go back to velocity in and out very handy that these also pertain to the grid so if you see the uh, division here it's quarter that I have eighth sixteenth thirty seconds back to one fourth so that's all of this stuff for the MIDI editor um, so just the amount of things you can do on here helps um, just another small example, say I know that first thing is highlighted and I have the FX chain up and I'm like, ooh, MIDI editor, let's get that. Oh wait, that's not the right one, it's the next one. I don't even have to look at it. I can just maneuver like this and it'll just take a little bit of extra workout. That is, of course, if you know where you're at on all this stuff. So um, that is it for the MIDI editor section. One last thing I have added is effects. So I'm actually going to select my drum bus. I'm gonna open it so you can see the inserts and I'll actually open up the effects chain. So you can see both at the same time and go into effects. So these are all my effects, which I've shown on other videos, but then I have this section here. Now these are just cosmetic keys. I know how to count to five, but I just like the visual aspect. So these, just pertain to your effects on an, a track in the order that they're listed from top to bottom. So let's say I want to A, B my EQ. Well, EQ is third in the track. So if you watch both on the FX chain and on here, they will deactivate when I hit the switch. That's pretty nice. And you can see the visual feedback on the key. It moves to the right, left side and turns white, and then turns right and green. So that's really nice. Another thing I use that for is say I have a lot of uh, reverbs and delays going on at the same time on a lot of tracks, and I think maybe it's too muddy or something. It's nice to be able to not even have the FX chain open, and I can say, hmm, let me see what it sounds like without the reverb. And you can see it goes off. So that's pretty cool. And of course, I don't even need that open. Um, if I just know where it is on the track, that might be handy. Like if you only have one, then of course you would hit either one or maybe your second one if it's through contact. So those are the new things I've added. At this point, I have just about everything I need. So if you have any other questions, let me know. Uh, if I come up with some really interesting things or have enough stuff to maybe make another video, I will throw it your way. Thanks.